Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you present here today at the 45th reunion of class of 1979. This is a very momentous occasion as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 e glorious years of the Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantesh Palani, Dean Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. Shahid Sheikh, Batch Coordinator, to kindly take his seat on the stage. I now humbly request Mr. Rajiv Roy to please join us on the stage. <laughs> Requesting Mr. Vasant Joshi to kindly take his seat on the stage. And now I would like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhan Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute. At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyoti has been observed. The lighting of lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, knowledge, dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IIT Kanpur. Despite the years that have passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. Yes, no? Yes. So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming young, rowdy students once again? Shall we? So I would request everyone to clap with me three times and shout 45 as loud as you can. This was good, but we can do it better with the rhythm now. Three times and 45 louder. Thank you, thank you. That's fine. <laughs> so let me take you through a short trip down the memory lane. 50 years ago, more than 240 young boys and two girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Chai chavanni ki thi, Coca Cola athanni ki. Char minar ka pack saad paise ka, aur thara santra as athara rupay ki. Mess bill 130 rupay ka, IIT ki fees saad e bara rupay ki, aur hostel fees. 25 rupay ki hoti thi. State bank mein account 10 rupay mein khul jata tha. It was an era of Devanand, Madhubala, Rajesh Khanna, Sharmila Tagore, Jaya Bhaduri, and Vahida Rahman. And Dimple was a hot favorite. Famous villains were Pran, Ajit Khan, P. 
प्रेम चोपड़ा रंजीत एंड वैम्सवर बिंतु ललिता पवार नादिरा एंड ऑफ कोर्स हेलेन चलती का नाम गाड़ी बीस साल बाद एंड जॉनी ने जॉनी मेरा नाम वह ब्लॉक बस्टर्स विच वन सोलवा साल ओके फेमस जागन्स एट द अडा पॉइंट व फत्रु फुदा सूड फंडा गोल चाप दिया मैथ्स कर दिया तेल हो गया टू गो प्लेसेस इन द सिटी व चुंगफा फुतु अंबी ढाबा एट आई टी गेट एंड रेड रोज इन कैंपस आई टी गेट का आलू पराठा और शशि कैंटीन का चाउमीन व क्वाइट फेमस I don't think anybody would have missed visiting Regal Heer Palace Sundar Talkies for entertainment and Kalyanpur ka Kannu Nautanki was another big hit Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction and the most common phrase used during the movie time was <laughs> audio audio and focus <laughs> getting stuck at ravatpur for lack of transportation was real pain thanks to bara number ki city bus which would run in every few uh, every few hours otherwise 11 number zindabad tempo was definitely there ganesh ji ka tempo correct does anyone remember doctors at health center here So a rapid quick rapid fire for you whom would you visit if you are sick doctor sikka and whom would you visit if you are bored doctor bored bunker <laughs> it mandi closer to shimla and it palakkad close to kanyakumari was inaugurated in 2015 but we had them in it kanpur in our hostel cupboards since we entered back in 1979 generally we were asked to go to Sh- shimla or kanyakumari by our seniors agar shimla gaye to freeze ho jate the aur agar it kanyakumari gaye to squeeze ho jate the <laughs> everyone must have seen famous hollywood movie sita aur geeta yes this batch also saw sita Ma- but magically transforming to not geeta but deepa ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about sita travels jo aapke aapke travel arrange karti thi lekin sita travels transformed to deepa travels all credits to enchanting deepa coordinator of travel agency talash rehti thi shushupal ji ki as he would do odd jobs aur intezar rehta tha शिव चरण जी का शिव चरण जी बोले तो मेल मैसेजर हु वुड ब्रिंग एडमिशन लेटर्स स्कॉलरशिप लेटर्स अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर्स इंक्लूडिंग शादी के प्रपोजल लेटर्स लव लेटर्स प्रपोजल लेटर्स आई थिंक कन्वर्टेड टू लव लेटर्स बाय देन The brawl between Hall Two and Hall Three had always been famous for various reasons. Battle of supremacy would range right from competing for cultural festivals to sports to mass shouting from rooftops during blackouts to gali competition. It only reminds me of famous quote by Atal Bihari Bajpayee Ji: "Kaurav kaun, kaun Pandav? Tedha sawal hai, dono or fella." शकुनी का कूट जाल है लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन दिस इज एन ऑनर्ड बैच टू सी फेमस पर्सनैलिटीज लाइक रवि शंकर तलत महमूद जगजीत सिंह चित्रा सिंह सोनल मान सिंह हेमंत कुमार मन्ना डे तनुश्री शंकर एंड वेल नोन स्पिरिचुअल गुरु चिन्मय आनंद जी विजिट द कैंपस ड्यूरिंग दिस डे a studious batch to remember the electrifying lectures of professor c n r rao professor g d agarwal professor usha kumar professor r n biswas professor parasnes professor m m oberoi professor vijay gupta and professor g k lal 
a multi-dimensional bat who would use computer center for multiple reasons. Apart from practicals and labs, the footfall at computer center during the cultural fest would increase to a great extent to collect discarded punch cards as they were used as darts for underperformance as well as to make farras during exam time. A generous batch who always stayed connected with their alma mater and contributed towards serene waterfront 795, an iconic landmark of the institution. And finally, a blessed batch. Because 240 ladko mein teen hi ladke kabil nikle as three girls chose their life partner here. I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to, uh, to try to get a closer look of the class of 1979, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here today to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Ringi. <laughs> Mulgi. <laughs> KD. <laughs> PKT. Rat, Anna, JP, MG Sword, Sardi, Yogi, Priya, Jake or Priya, Mota Mishra. <laughs> Mota Sinha <laughs> Makra <laughs> Case <laughs> Mirchi <laughs> This is all I have treasured from the treasure of the memories of class of 1979. <laughs> Laddu, that's... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1979. I hope I got my facts right. On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about in our next reunion. We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person, something we cannot take for granted anymore. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director I.D. Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. So, uh, very good morning and uh, warm welcome to I.D. Kanpur. I'm sure many of you have been visiting, but those who are visiting after a long time, I'm sure uh, you are having a wonderful time, and uh, our DORA office and IITK Development Foundation is taking care of your stay and comforts. So uh, I'm Ganesh. I'm currently the officiating director of this institute. I've been a faculty in this institute for the last 22 years. Uh, I'm with the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering. Uh, I've been the deputy director, uh, so uh, that's the reason I am now stepping in as a officiating director until a new director is being appointed. Uh, what I would do is that I'll give just sort of a overview about the institute as to uh, where it is today as compared to where it was when you were a student here, and some of the short-term goals that we have. And of course, uh, we do have a very detailed plan as to where we should be 10 years from now. So that is something that we can discuss, um, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if you know, some of you could contribute on that. So this is more of a status report, uh, just to give an overview as to where we are today. <clears throat> so uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, IIT Kanpur is known for the computing powers, not only in terms of the, you know, the ability of the students in this domain, but also the infrastructure, and that is something that we're extremely proud of, and we continue to have, you know, upgrading our uh, computer center facility. We have the 
1.3 petaflops supercomputer that was uh, you know sort of installed about four or five years back, and it's one of the you know uh, uh, high performing computing facilities uh, that exist in the country. <laughs> So the other thing that we are very, very proud of is the, the greenery. Uh, I'm sure all of you uh, had a chance to go around the campus. So although you have new buildings that have come up, you also would have noticed that the, uh, the campus has become greener. And that is, again, a sustained effort by the, cam you know, the campus community to keep this as green as possible. Uh, in terms of the overall strength of the institute, we have close to about 600 faculty members right now and about 5,000 undergraduate students and almost equal number of PG students, it's a bit outdated, it's about 4,300 PG students we have. And it's about 9,500, maybe in next one year or so, we may be touching about 10,000 students. And we have close to 200 postdocs currently on campus and uh, we are extremely proud of our alumni. Um, the alumni base is over 43,000. I mean, that's that's perhaps bring in the visibility and the brand for IIT Kanpur. And uh, you know, every year we add alumni to this uh, you know uh, illustrious list. And I'm sure uh, in years to come, uh, the institute would have much more uh, significant visibility and uh, you know strength. Uh, in terms of academic department, I'm sure the list is much uh, larger than what you have seen during your days here. So the one that are shown here in the red color flaunt are the departments that were added in the last uh, three, four years. We have added sustainable energy engineering as a new department. We have also included the department of design uh, in the engineering. And the biological sciences bioengineering, of course, came about 23 years back. And in the science discipline, we have cognitive science, we have space, planetary, astronomical sciences, and engineering. And uh, in the humanities, the economics used to be part of the humanities. Now it's a different uh, independent department in the last 10 years. And then we do have interdisciplinary programs uh, that, that are you know, uh, primarily, you, know, you draw faculty from various departments. They have offer the academic uh, programs in photonics, in material science, and in nuclear engineering technology. <laughs> so one of the new and major initiative that the institute's taken up is uh, offering an online degree called e-masters program and you can see there are about 14 such programs that are you know uh, currently being offered by the institute these are all tailored to the industry professionals mainly for their upskilling so we have close to about uh, 650 students already registered first batch students already graduated from this and we have four more programs that are in the pipeline see extremely popular program for those who are you know, working in industry. Uh, some of them are fully sponsored by a uh, given industry. Uh, in that way, we not only, uh, you know, the, the courses are not only offered by the faculty from within the department, but we also uh, invite, uh, you know, guest faculty from the industry to give the industry flavor in the program. So this is something that uh, we are really looking at as a, you know, an outreach activity for upskilling the industry professional. Uh, uh, as you are aware, you know, IIT Kanpur has the most flexible academic programs, especially if you look at the undergraduate programs. Uh, you know, we have, among all the IITs, I would say this is the most flexible because a student can do a double major uh, by staying here for one more year. Uh, and dual degree meaning you can do a, a master, uh, you know, by staying one more year, you can do a master's, not only in the same department, but you can choose any other department to have your master's program. So that is extremely flexible. And not only that, we have moved into what is called as a credit-based system. Uh, so the student can, in fact, complete their undergraduate program in about three years if they're able to take overload and take courses in the summer and complete. I mean, so that's that you don't need to stay for four years. And, and that's one of the reasons why many of the students do minor and yet graduate within four years or earlier. So that's something that we have brought in. And also we have introduced honors program, interdepartmental degree, and, and, and an undergraduate degree, what is called as uh, social science, communication, humanities, economics, management, environment. This is a scheme which sort of covers many of the departments. And we do have what is called as exit degree option now for the students who are having inadequate academic performance, uh, they can exit with what is called as 
BSc in Applied Sciences uh, after having certain credits that could be close to about two and a half years to three years. And uh, they also can credit some of the massive online courses that are available, offered by many IITs and IIC. This is a proctored exam. So that can be counted towards you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, academic requirement. And of course, we have introduced what is called as internship or startup. If they spend some time in the industry or in the startup during the summer, that also can be converted into credit to sort of promote students, uh, you know, their interest in entrepreneurship. Uh, in terms of faculty growth, uh, you can see that in the recent past that we have added a significant number of faculty to our strength. So it's about 600 plus now. Uh, in, the, in the last five years, we have offered more than 300 uh, you know, offers, of which 207 have accepted. Uh, and I, I would like to assure you that, that the faculty that we get are outstanding. I mean, these are the people who get offers in the top, you know, the old IIT, IIC, or any of the leading universities abroad. And uh, you know, our success rate also in terms of you know, when you make an offer, whether they are not they would join, that also sort of gives uh, an indication as to uh, the brand value, like they, they, they do value you know, joining IIT Kanpur. It's about 60, more than 60%. <clears throat> uh, the faculty, uh, obviously, are uh, you know, some of them are very, very celebrated faculty that have been awarded with Padma Shri that is uh, shown. Likewise, the Infosys Prize is again uh, to recognize the contribution in, you know, in research. And the, the last two that you see over here, uh, these are the two faculty members, the Professor Sachitan Interparty and Professor Arun Shukla, have been awarded the Infosys Prize for 2023. You know, this is this year, uh, the award was uh, handed over. So that again talks about the quality of research that that uh, you know the institute carries out. Uh, these are other recognition, international recognition. For example, the World Academy of Science Fellowship in last year, Professor Avinash Agarwal was recognized, uh, and of course, Professor Manindra Agarwal is a foreign associate of the U.S. National Academy again, which is a prestigious recognition. And there are many other international recognition that you see uh, for many of our faculty that really speaks uh, high about their. Uh, you know, contribution. So these are the uh, Indian government recognition for, uh, you know, research, Shanti Shwarup Bhatnagar Award. It's a huge list. Uh, that again, you know, I would say is only next to IASC in terms of number of Bhatnagar Fellows. So that again, you know, puts uh, IIT uh, Kanpur among the top institute in terms of the research and development. The ecosystem is something that uh, you probably would have heard about this morning, about uh, the incubator and uh, techno park, but I'll give you a little kind of a summary of it. So we do have departments, and uh, we have the interdisciplinary program that offers the academic program, and the PhD students from these you know, uh, academic units really contribute to the research, because the bulk of the research is done by the PhD students, because you know, the postdocs, you know, the number is small as compared to any you know, universities from the U.S. or Western countries, uh, and and of course we what we have is a thematic research centers that are listed there. Uh, for example, Nano Science Center and the National Center for Flexible Electronics, Cybersecurity, and so on, which I will give little details. And uh, <coughs> we have uh, central facilities, which includes, for example, the wind tunnel facility. Uh, many of you would have seen that, and the Advanced Center for Material Sciences. We have Advanced Imaging facilities, again, a very high-end facility and supercomputing facility. We have even a very high-end animal house as well. So these are the research facilities that help in the research. And we have this incubator, what you call as first, uh, which is uh, which, which uh, you know, not only uh, in incubates companies, but it offers seed grant to companies. You know, in, and that's, that's something that we do have the provision that our government of India has given us grant to you know seed some of these uh, startups, and we have a bi bio design um, internship and many other activities. And Techno Park is one such uh, facility wherein the industry can come and set up their R and D facility here, uh, and and then their engagement actually reduces their rental. So that's the model. So if you really look at the ranking, uh, ID Kanpur ranked number one in the innovation category in the country. Uh, overall, it is five in engineering, it's four. Uh, that's the standing uh, in the Indian scenario. So there are a number of uh, uh, innovations that are already either uh, deployed or uh, tech transfer to the industry has happened. 
for example, the national blockchain for the e-governments. Like, it is something that is a huge initiative for the government of India. The anti-counterfeiting technology, again, is licensed to a company for, you know, protecting uh, any product. You know, easily one can verify whether it is a counterfeit or is an authentic product. Also, we have this touch-sensitive watch for the blind and visually impaired. This is, again, uh, you know, transferred to company uh, for the manufacturing. So we have the National Air Quality Index. Again, it is managed by ID Kanpur. So we have IoT device for soil testing, that is uh, Bhu Pariksha, and many other, including the PMP impact-based uh, samplers for air quality, and Padmavati is, again, a water quality, and so on. But these are other such examples. Uh, what is uh, really uh, something that we are proud of is that our uh, uh, you know, tech transfer rate, for example, 14% of our IPR and patents gets transferred to the industry. It's extremely very good. Uh, the international average is about 6 to 7%. We hope to increase it further. Therefore, you know, uh, we are able to make an impact in terms of uh, industry innovation and incubation activities. So we have close to about 170 startups in our portfolio. Uh, and as many companies have graduated, the cumulative turnover portfolio is about 90 crores. Uh, the funding raised by these companies are close to 380 crores. There are more than 4,000 jobs have been created. Uh, about 75 startups are women-led enterprises. Again, it really talks very high of our incubation system. And what is uh, important is that the startups, you know, we offer them the lab space and 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 help them with their R and D. Uh, you know, the startup they themselves have you know patented you know more than 50 IPRs they have patented. You know, that is owned by the startups uh, either on their own or uh, along with the uh, ID Kanpur. So uh, these are some of the companies that are shown on the right side. The NDU Air is one of the startups developed by one of our faculty in the aerospace engineering department. <laughs> Uh, which is, again, a, a startup which is doing exceedingly well, both in defense and civil application. The government, uh, many of the governments seek their service in terms of when, when there is a flood relief or whatever, when, when they have to deliver medicine and any other product. Uh, the off-grid is another company which is making uh, a, a battery for EV uh, vehicles, and this is using a very different novel material. Uh, and, and it has got a huge investment recently. Uh, this is again from our, some of our students who started this company. Fool is another company which you collects the temple waste and convert them into various products. I'm sure you would have heard about this company, the, 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 the sticks for, you know, with, with fragrance that is well known, but what they have also come up with, what is called as a flather, uh, which is a vegan leather, uh, which is the, you know, R&D product of this, again, temple waste flowers which is as good as leather, but it's, the origin is plant-based. Uh, they are now you know, going into product development in that. So these are some of the recognitions for the incubators. One of them is the NOCO Robotics that uh, developed this uh, invasive ventilator during COVID time I'll sort of touch upon. Uh, you know, it's pretty uh, impressive. I would say that if not the best, this is one among the top uh, two or three in the in the country in terms of the incubation activities. Uh, this is one uh, such initiative, the NOCORC is a company, startup, again, students from, you know, former students of IIT Kanpur who, you know, developed uh, these products. Basically, they are, uh, you know, originally the company was making robots for cleaning the solar panels, but during the COVID, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, even the government of India called for R&D in, in, in making this ventilator. So what you see on the left side is a ventilator that is developed by this company in, in support from IIT Kanpur faculty and alumni base. Uh, this product has come in about 10 months from the, you know, the, the, from the design to the production. So that's actually, it's now more than 4,000 uh, units are installed in the country. They are now importing, uh, sorry, they are now exporting and the good thing about this product is that the entire supply chain is available within the country. That's one of the reasons why they are able to make it even during the lockdown, right? And the price, if you really look at uh, comparable products, about 40%. That's what uh, is made more affordable. And there's a book uh, that actually captures how the entire project, you know, sort of we are able to put together even in the toughest uh, situation when the country was in. 
So these are some idea about, uh, you know, brief about the centers that we have. These are research centers. There are no academic program, but the huge facility and a large number of faculty come together. And, and uh, you know, the grants come from many uh, funding bodies, including the government of India, international, and uh, industries, uh, you know, sponsor them. So for example, the nanoscience center really looks at nanoscience as uh, you know, the platform to offer many of the solutions. For example, uh, MIMS device for, you know, detection of mycobacterium tubercles. This is one that is patented. And then oh, microfluidic platform for oral cancer detection. There are many other. And in fact, uh, the eSpin Nanotech is a company that made this uh, Swasa mask. You know, I'm sure many of you have used it. This is a spin-off of this particular center. So they, they, <clears throat> they do, uh, make many other products, including the uh, water purification device and so on. Uh, that's something that's uh, about nanoscience center. So we have National Center for Flexible Electronics. Again, this is a huge facility, again, funded by uh, the METI, Government of India. And of course, they have a large number of industry partners as well. So they do also fund the projects. Uh, there are uh, multiple verticals within that. Uh, the focus areas are listed medical electronics, display and lighting, anti-counterfeiting, organic solar cells, and, and uh, logic memory, and so on. Uh, again, there are uh, very good uh, tech transfers. One of them is uh, early uh, breast cancer detection device that's already been transferred to one of the Japanese companies. <clears throat> So we have Center for Cybersecurity. Uh, this is again a center. This is one of its kind in the country. And this is one center, it's a go-to center for any of the you know, uh, cyber security issues. Um, you know, the government often refers to this particular center, even including, for example, when there is a hacking in any of the system, whether it is uh, stock exchange or shipping yard, or even when you have any new phone that is introduced handset, you know, so which has a certain uh, behavior that is not uh, uh, good, you want to really investigate, that are sent here for surveillance. So we do a lot of such kind of R&D activities, mainly for the government, including in defense applications. And then we also do uh, what is called as a manpower training. We do have a master's program in cybersecurity. We offer the e-master's program in cybersecurity because this is a field that we need to really train manpower. That is also, uh, you know, we are doing, and of course, this Center for Cybersecurity also has seed fund to uh, you know, identify, fund, nurture startups in cybersecurity area. So we have probably about 25 companies in this domain alone, which is pretty much nurtured by this center. So we, uh, the other center that recently we launched is the Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine. This is funded by uh, Mehta Family Foundation, uh, uh, in the Indian origin family that really look at healthcare delivery as one of the uh, uh, one of the avenues of funding, and uh, there are three verticals, as you can see. The main focus is to use engineering and technology principle for diagnosis and prevention, disease prevention. <clears throat> this was inaugurated on 7th of March. So uh, we also have a fantastic facility for 5G test bed, what you call, and uh, you know this, uh, apart from the R&D, this test bed allows the companies to test their devices in the 5G technologies. In fact, uh, IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras together develop technology, uh, what you call as 5G RAN technology, which will become a backbone of telecommunication in India. Uh, this has been licensed to Tejas Network, a Tata Group uh, owned company. Uh, that tech transfer was done on 11th of December. Uh, this, this is going to be one of the major, major backbone of the telecommunication in the years to come. And some of these uh, you know, contributions of this institute in R&D has been highlighted by the Prime Minister uh, through his tweets or through his, uh, the radio program, what you call Monkey Bat. So we have set up, again, another center. This is called a Center for Developing Intelligence System. Uh, this is mainly uh, a center that uses AA and ML as the platform for many of the you know, applications. Uh, one uh, such... Uh, um, uh, I'll uh, talk about a little later, this, this CPGram portal, I'll come to that. This is also one of the offshoots of this particular center. So we have a center for excellence in for unmanned varial vehicle. Uh, this has been funded both, both by the center and the UP government because the government see this is going to be a, a major uh, 
uh, kind of a lot of investment and a lot of this used to be going to be a big industry base for this. And uh, we also offer what is called as in you know we have a fantastic uh, expertise in this area uh, from the aerospace engineering, not only there in controls, in sensors, and and even in cyber security. So. We have computer science and engineering. We have cyber security center and electrical engineering. They are part of it. And we also offer what you call as an MTech program in unmanned aerial systems. This is something which is also supported by Government of India to train manpower in this area. So there are, again, as I told you, there are a number of startups. Uh, this is what I was referring to, what is called a centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system, what you call as a CPGRAM uh, portal, which is monitored by the Prime Minister of India. This portal collects, you know, uh, complaints or grievances from, uh, you know, across the country in any language, and uh, this is a completely AI-based uh, uh, platform uh, developed by IIT Kanpur faculty members, and this can, you know, uh, the number of hits that gets is in several lakhs, but, you know, this platform can sort these grievances to respective departments, uh, regardless in which language they are posted, regardless. They don't use the text, but the context-based sorting mechanism. So, therefore, the you know not only uh, you know sorting the you know the grievance to respective sections or divisions, but it also does the follow-up. So, this has become an effective tool for the government to monitor the grievances. And in fact, this has been recognized by the central government by giving a national award for e-governance silver award. So, that's a photograph there. Uh, so the difference, DRDO also has funded what is called as a center of excellence, uh, mainly uh, you know, for the critical and futuristic technologies for defense and security. Uh, our IID Kanpur has identified for the materials you know, verticals. So you can see that all five verticals that, that are listed here, uh, that all relates to materials like flexible electronic, advanced nanomaterials, accelerated material design development, and so on. Uh, uh, it's it's a uh, you know it's close to 200 crore proposal. Number of proposals have already been funded. Uh, Professor Kantesh Balani is is the coordinator for this center, and uh, he'll be uh, be happy to provide any details on this. Technopark is uh, you know I mentioned about it, and there was also a discussion morning I guess. So this is uh, you know a facility wherein the industry can come and set up uh, their R and D lab. So recently we signed an MOU with the Loras Lab, uh, one of the large pharma companies in the country, uh, including Biologics. So what we have transferred to them is a novel gene delivery platform. So it's a viral-based platform. So the idea is that you know, this platform can be used to transfer any gene that is defective in one person's body. So you'll be able to correct it. And that could be the treatment or effective cure for that uh, disease. And so, uh, you know, this platform is extremely expensive if you have to get it from abroad. So this is developed in-house. Uh, this would give you the affordable, you know, way of uh, treatment. So this company is setting up a huge facility on campus. They are investing close to you know, more than 100 crores a year in setting up what is called a, a small production facility as well. So that would be, you know, taken up in the large scales once, you know, it undergoes clinical trials. So there's a huge investment uh, in this domain. So we also signed an MOU with, uh, uh, you know, uh, a cancer uh, care center in Lucknow, the KSSSCI, and uh, Carquinos Healthcare Private Limited, a company that is funded by both uh, the Reliance and Tata's. Uh, so this company is basically setting up a genomic screen facility for screening cancer patients for genomic changes, and this particular, you know. Uh, this is a diagnosis, but the uh, the volume of data that they do they would be you know generating is so huge. Uh, so IIT Kanpur would be using this data to understand the signatures and come up with predictive markers as well as for you know markers for early diagnosis and so on. So that's that's something that we have already initiated. Uh, the work is going on. Uh, the other MOU that we have done, in fact, uh, with uh, a new institute that is coming up in the Kanpur is Indian Institute of Skills. It was inaugurated yesterday by the Prime Minister of India. So IIT Kanpur has been given the role of mentoring this institute. So we are setting up the syllabus and we will be running the program for skilling for, uh, you know, either for the industry professionals or the fresh graduates. So 
Uh, there are three such institutes in the country. Two of them are in uh, Hamadabad and Mumbai. Uh, they are operated by Adani and uh, Tata's. So they are looking at a very different areas. But what we have invested here is to develop you know, uh, manpower in the emerging areas as listed here, robotic and automation, advanced manufacturing, agricultural 4.4, advanced defense technology in healthcare. So there are many companies already coming. HAL is one of the partners uh, for us uh, to train them using this facility. The facility is coming up. There will be facilities set up on campus as well. So this is an MOU that was signed between Ministry of Skill Development because that institute is funded by them. So we also recently established what is called as Kotak School of Sustainability. Uh, the name Kotak is because they have funded uh, generously for this particular initiative, for close to 120 crores they have pledged for this. We call it as a school because it goes beyond the academic program. So we are looking at research, we are looking at policy, we are looking at engaging with the government, we are looking at how we can transform the society per se. So that's that. these are uh, the areas, it will have multiple departments. We already have one department, uh, We at least two or three departments will come up uh, in, in, in next uh, few years to uh, you know, come. So thanks to our alumni, uh, you know, we have uh, centers. For example, the Chandrakanta Keshan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solution is a center that is a brainchild of uh, one of our distinguished alumni, uh, uh, Mr. Sudhakar Kesavan. Uh, he not only funded this initiative, but he also you know, really seeded the idea, and not only seeded the idea for the center, but uh, I would say he was one of those who really uh, helped us to uh, expand uh, the scope of research and contribution in sustainability, therefore you have the School of Sustainability. And we're also thankful to Dr. Uh, Mr. Muktesh Pant, uh, he funded this uh, Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and Other Indian Languages, a center that really helped the students, mainly undergraduate students, who, for their soft landing, because when they come, uh, they often have done their schooling in vernacular languages. They, when they come here, they find the English uh, medium to be more challenging. So this center really helps <coughs> in helping them uh, with the transition. <clears throat> Thanks to uh, our alumni. Uh, there are many initiatives that are preceded by them, uh, supported by them, and uh, nurtured by them. So one is uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh Rozi Siksha Kendra. This is a center which is really, uh, you know, really working for upliftment of uh, youth in the rural area. Uh, for example, vocational training or even uh, conducting, you know, uh, you know, classes for those uh, kids in the rural area. So we, in fact, with the UP government, we have now a kind of an agreement to mentor the teachers for that training and, and adopting many schools in the village area for uh, you know, uh, uh, training in STEM area. This is something that is going in a big way. Uh, I would uh, request you, if you have time, please visit this center. You would understand how uh, it is making a difference in the rural community. And we have the Jeet Bindra Unit Operations Lab as part of the chemical engineering. So recently we launched this Jaipulur Non-Invasive Brain Simulation Lab. Uh, it's part of the Jaipulur Neuroscience Initiative and also uh, refurbished the reading room in the PK Kelkar Library, thanks to uh, our alum, uh, late uh, Mr. Jaipulur and his family for our contribution. Uh, I'll touch upon the international collaborations. When I talk about collaboration, we are talking about the academic program because this is something that is uh, uh, you know, uh, bring in many changes, not only in academics, but in research also. So we have 14 joint uh, degree programs with universities overseas. Uh, when I say joint degree, the joint degree is awarded by both IIT Kanpur and the partner university. So we have one with the Taiwan National Chia Tang University. Uh, the other one is New York uh, University Tandon School, mainly in the engineering discipline, in La Trobe University in smart cities and sustainability and so on. So we have close to about 100 students who are in the joint PhD degree program. So recently we have also approved joint uh, master's program, both for M-Tech uh, and for MBA. Uh, we should be taking up soon uh, you know, with the board and get approval. So at least five leading US university is on board in such kind of a program. This is just to give a glimpse of some of the MOUs that we have done uh, as part of uh, this such activity. 
Infrastructure, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of development uh, in campus. Uh, you know, uh, we have really grown uh, in terms of the, you know, the lab residential area because the number of departments have grown. This, you know, student strength has grown, and faculty strength has grown. There are a lot more need for coffees and labs and so on. So these are some of these initiatives. You can see that the Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex is the largest building on campus now. So we have. Uh, labs, which is called as engineering science labs, one, two, three, and then we have the old core extension. You know, the, the old core lab has been extended with a new building to house some of the labs for the chemistry department. We have uh, strengthened our central AC plant to support the air conditioning requirement. Likewise, we added uh, you know apartments for the faculty, type three apartment, 112. This is Mathas Family Center for Engineering Building. We have added hostels. We have added research complex. This is for housing many of the large R&D initiatives like the centers and uh, like the defense centers and so on. Techno Park again is for housing the R&D labs of the industry. So these are some of the initiatives that that, have, that we have begun and many of them are completed, some still pending. Uh, one uh, major initiative that, uh, that we have made is uh, a setting up of the IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. This is a Section 8 company fully you know, uh, controlled or owned by IIT Kanpur. Uh, this professional entity has really helped us to you know, go in big way in fundraising, also in, in an organized way of engaging with the alumni. Uh, uh, we are very, very uh, grateful to alumni who are part of this board. Uh, Dr. B.V.R. Mohanreddy, Mr. Raju Ranjan, and Raju Swarup. And uh, Mr. Kapil Kaul is the CEO of this, uh, you know, Section 8 company. And I'm sure all of you would have seen a difference in terms of the alumni engagement uh, and how we are able to really enhance, uh, you know, in kind of uh, communication with the alumni and including the alumni reunions. Uh, so this is just to give an update on fundraising. So we have been doing exceedingly well. Uh, you can see that. Uh, past five years, if you see 2023, uh, significant you know fundraising activities, uh, and the breakup also shown from alumni and CSR. These are major source for our fundraising activity. Uh, I would say that the year 2023 among the IITs, IIT Kanpur was the best in terms of you know the amount raised, and we really uh, wish to uh, you know expand this because the large need of infrastructural needs. And we are extremely grateful to all our alumni uh, who have contributed in many different ways, including, for example, in, 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 in the way of donation, or even in many other way contributed uh, to running our Section 8 companies or in fundraising activities or mentoring students and so on. We are very, very grateful to all of them. So these are some of the alumni reunion programs. Uh, uh, it happened in Australia or in the US. Uh, and this is reunions on campus, uh, 2023. Uh, you can see that after the COVID break, we are able to activate it, a large number of classes. Uh, you know, We are able to host them and share with them the excitement and happenings. <clears throat> this year so far, uh, you know, we have a large number today and one more uh, for this year to this session to complete. Uh, I would, you know, end my sort of brief uh, with uh, one uh, project that we have taken up in a big way. Uh, this is the School of, Gangwal School of Medical Sciences and Technology. Um, as you have seen in India, the medical universities are standalone universities mainly focused on healthcare delivery. Um, the research focus and entrepreneurship is you know, is not having that kind of a trust or mentoring as compared to IITs or many other technical institutes. So our idea is to bring in a medical school within the campus. Therefore, we can transform the mid-tech you know, uh, you know, ecosystem because the majority of the equipments and devices and everything that we have in the hospital or for the <clears throat> treatment have come from, are coming from abroad. They import huge cost, and especially if you have a situation like COVID, there are a lot of uh, export restrictions by these uh, companies or their <clears throat> countries. Then we are at a disadvantaged position. Even mask became a big, big challenge for India to uh, manage when there was a COVID. So 
what we are setting up uh, in an ambitious project is uh, a super specialty hospital, which has about 500 beds. There are uh, eight different clinical disciplines. Uh, this is named as uh, Edupati Singhania Super Specialty Hospital, uh, named after one of our alum, and also because of the fund that we received from the JK Group Cement. And then we are also setting up uh, close to 10 different center of excellence. These are R&D centers, each one having a thematic research area, and each one is taking up a flagship project uh, in medtech domain. You can see here the COEs are telemedicine, robotic, cardiovascular, and pulmonary disease, and so on. And all these are, uh, you know, uh, sort of formal, you know, we came up with this concept by looking at the strength that we have on the campus and also looking at what are the needs um, in the country. Uh, so we have close to about 80 faculty members from diverse department of the institute are associated with this school. So we will be hiring uh, clinical faculty sometime next year. We are, we, we, we are hoping to have about 60 to 70 clinical faculty members also on board. So when we have them, they will also have joint appointments with many of the other departments. Therefore, we could really look at multidisciplinary research, you know, as a research and innovation as the focus. Uh, this school is coming up in a 30-acre plot uh, on the Shivli Gate on the backside of this campus, you can see here. Um, and uh, we are very, very grateful to the alumni support for this, uh, Mr. Rakesh Gangwal, uh, you know, has really contributed a you know, uh, really in a big way. So that's why the school is named after him as Gangwal School. We are extremely fortunate to have our founder donors who not only uh, uh, given us support in terms of, uh, you know, funding, but also have been the real champions behind the initiative. They have been advising us in many different ways uh, as to how the school should become. So we also have the League of Co-Founders uh, just to give an idea, for example, this Center of Excellence in Cardiovascular Research, uh, you know, as in many of the COEs, as one of the flagship projects. This flagship project is uh, to develop what you call as an artificial heart or left ventricular assist device, which we named it as Hridayantra. Uh, this R&D initiative is funded generously by the batch of 76 and also by partly by Mr. Sudhamurthy and many other you know, funding from the government of India as well. Uh, if you really look at uh, the, the death that happens because of the cardiac failure, uh, there are close to 20,000 plus death happens in India, in, even in teenage, because of the heart failure. And they all, the life could be saved if you can buy what you call as uh, the LVAD or artificial heart, you know. Uh, that works beautifully uh, and really, you know, make them live uh, as normal as possible. And but the biggest challenge is the affordability. It's close, it costs close to one and a half crores, uh, leave alone the medical, uh, you know, expenses. So that is prohibitive for a majority of the patients. Therefore, it is there is no really no help. And that's the project that sort of conceived by Dr. Devi Shetty is one of the advisors for the med school and also is one of the uh, major force behind taking up this project and also not only in initiating but uh, really you know opening up his uh, um, you know uh, his hospital and also mentoring all through and uh, thanks to the support uh, we received from different stakeholders what we can say is that we have started this project uh, <clears throat> last year in Feb 2023 so we have a prototype that is ready, uh, which is doing exceedingly well for all the uh, tests that we have done. So we are ready for the animal trial. So we are we have this device, even the size is finalized. Uh, this is entirely inbuilt uh, on campus, right from the design, selection of the material, control system, everything is done here. Uh, so we are going to do a clinical uh, animal trial soon. So we are looking at either pig or buffalo, these are the two models that we will do. And uh, in one year, we should be going for the uh, clinical trial in the humans. Uh, the idea is to bring down the cost of this device to under 20 lakhs. That's the uh, idea. Better if you can bring it below uh, 10 lakhs. So there are many, uh, that's just a glimpse of one such, uh, you know, uh, proposal, but there are every COE uh, as uh, such flagship project uh, that we can um, discuss later. So there are various 
uh, avenues of uh, opportunities for you know funding this initiative either as co-founders or founding patrons uh, anyone interested will be very very happy to share more details so this uh, school has already taken off because a lot of infrastructure requirement what you see the building that is coming up is the uh, residential complex for the resident doctors we have about 90 uh, studio apartments for the resident doctors we have done the bhumi pujan for the med school and academic complex at the hospital and academic complex uh, you can see that this, this is the on-site progress the construction the award is given to the lnt they are building it and we expect to have this uh, hospital and academic complex functional by end of next year so that's the target so we already for the academic program as i said that uh, you know our idea is to create a med school which is very different not the aims type because we are not looking at creating manpower for healthcare which we cannot compete with any of the established medical schools that are there and we need not compete with them either so our idea is to create you know uh, doctors who are very different as compared to others so the idea the eventual goal is that anyone who has joined our institute in the undergraduate program should you know uh, you know uh, go to what is called as uh, uh, a, a pathway program where they do medicine, uh, MD, after their B.Tech or B.S. Therefore, they are as good in medicine as they are in engineering and science. Therefore, they can take up any challenging research problem that could be of you know, larger impact. So we have signed an MOU with the University of Melbourne, is one that university that have that kind of a pathway program. So we are looking with them, discussing with them on such kind of a program, because this is something that is not uh, currently can be offered in India because the medical, uh, the regulatory bodies is, is so uh, uh, strict about their norms. They don't allow any deviation. So we are looking at this kind of a pathway program. Uh, and likewise, we have you know MOU with the uh, University of Glasgow for some um, um, of the verticals. Uh, uh, that is something that going in a big way. So these are some of the goals in next one or two years, of course, to increase the overall faculty strength to 650 uh, and the student strength by, you know, uh, about 10,000, which is, you know, maybe next year we'll be able to reach. And then um, how the, you know, all the expansion of academic infrastructure, you complete them, how residential accommodation for students, because there's a shortage now as of now, so we have to add, we are planning to add about, you know, another 2,000 rooms, that is about 4,000 seats for the students. And that the two schools should up and running in full scale, Gangwal and School of Sustainability. And of course, we are looking at avenues where you can have horizontal growth, for example, a new school of entrepreneurship to nurture the budding entrepreneurs or school of data science. Uh, these are some of the initiatives that we are discussing. Uh, the major challenges, of course, have been Funding because the ministry doesn't give granting aid. What they give is mainly to take care of the salary, pension, fellowship for the students and campus maintenance. So they, all the infrastructure that you have seen, including the equipments, what we do is to, we, we do take loan from the government, uh, what is called as Higher Education Fund Authority or FR. So they give an interest-free loan, but we are expected to repay the loan in uh, 10 years period. Uh, so that is from our internal earnings from our IPR uh, that we sell to the overheads that we receive from projects and then from the fee that we collect from the students. And that's how we can repay. So we have already taken about 800 crores of uh, loan, uh, close to 450 we already repaid. Uh, and many of the projects uh, that you see all are funded by such kind of initiative. So that's the huge challenge because this money, otherwise you could have invested in research and many other, but that's a big, big challenge. So that's where we are really looking at how we can uh, generate more resource in for infrastructure or you know, our students in terms of their scholarships, awards, travel grants for the faculty in terms of higher seed grant awards and so on. Because it's a competitive, right? You know, there are other institutes that are doing well as good as us, but how do you attract the best talent here, both the students and, and the faculty? So there are many ways uh, by which the alumni could support uh, in terms of resource generation or in terms of contributing to the many different activities of the institute. 
for example, could be this visiting faculty, adjunct faculty, professor of practice, help us in many different ways. Uh, Mr. Jalan is one who really contributing a big way in our many of the R&D activities. Very, very thankful to him. And uh, you know that is something that we look forward and we'll be very, very open to discuss and engage uh, you know, any of you are interested in contributing and we really welcome all of you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. So if there are any query question, I can take it up. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, Shishpal Rawat. Uh, the question I wanted to ask was, um, what's the role the sustainability engineering department is actually playing in having these new buildings and infrastructure that is coming up to be sustainable itself? Yes, so, um, so the, see, these days, any building that you construct, uh, uh, we are expected to meet some of the standards in terms of, you know, ranked as a green building, right? So that is something that we are trying to do as per the, you know, expectation. But, you know, in terms of the specific questions, that is something that we have to, you know, really right now, uh, as I have shown you that what uh, the department is really looking at, one of the departments of the school is in sustainability, energy engineering, you know. So that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the solar, they're looking at uh, thermal and so on, and many other, you know, battery systems and chemical and so on. But one of the major projects that the school has taken up is to get the campus uh, carbon neutral. So that's something that they have taken up uh, as the entire campus, not only the building, to meet the global standard. Yeah. Uh, I am Naresh Sharma. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I have three uh, small things. First is that your presentation was very good. It gave us a good feeling that how the institute has grown, both in terms of diversification and quantitative goals. Sure. Uh, it really makes us proud. The three things that I want to talk about, two are within IIT, one is outside IIT. So one is that the student strength has grown overall nearly five times, faculty strength has grown one and a half times. So, uh, and I think any educational institution, faculty recruitment is perhaps the most important event because that is what matters. So I hope that uh, something seriously is done about that. Uh, I was talking to some of my friends who are on the faculty earlier. They said that in the first year, when you have tutorial classes, uh, we used to have 30 strength. He said there are 60, 70, 80 also in tutorial classes. He says that tutorial classes lose every meaning to have mass courses, physics courses in the beginning. So uh, of course, I think it is a very big challenge, but I'm sure that uh, Institute was thinking about that. That is one. Second is in the morning we are walking, we went to Hall 2, where you were. And this happened even 10 years ago. Already there are three students in the double rooms there. And I'm sure, again, that Institute is aware of that. So these are both faculty side, student side. Uh, academic activity, I'm sure that they will be very sincerely and all that. So there are two things, and outside is that uh, I have been a teacher also after going from here and <laughs> University of Hyderabad. And from the day I was there, whenever I got opportunity, I uh, mentioned to my son there also, that as academic leaders, in university system, that is also a leader. And IIT can't be the academic leader. Uh, how do we connect to the feeder system? Uh, most places, see IITs don't complete because uh, the competition through JE is Huge, so by and large, the input is very good. But universities, they are always complaining because they are postgraduate universities. That undergrad programs are such that the students who come, you feel that they are not very well trained. So, but we never connect with the, uh, the undergrad education system. Here, of course, it is there. And school system. Uh, I think when we give back, uh, rightly, the focus of the alumni is on the IIT Kanpur, uh, but larger responsibility is the society education system. Right. I think we should start thinking about that, that how our responsibility there, individually I want to do, yeah. but individuals can't do much. Right. Unless institutionally we think about some ways of connecting to 
not only intermediate education, but also primary education, yes. that right. how it can be improved. Yeah. And get really involved there. Yeah. I think we should think about that. Uh, you are leader here, so I'll put this to you. <laughs> and maybe take up with other institutions also. Sure, sure. Yeah. It is yeah. very, very important to be able to progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe I'll take up the last question first. Uh, you know, <laughs> what you said is uh, extremely important, uh, you know, point. Uh, if you really look at the other countries, uh, most of the developed countries, what they invest more is in the primary and secondary education, right? Uh, and then the higher education is more of a private player, like leading universities, if you see. There are public universities, but mostly these are privately funded universities are, you know, you have a larger number. But in India, it's the other way around, you know. So you, if you really talk about good schools in any city, we talk about a private school, which is exorbitant in terms of the fee that you pay. In fact, you pay more than what an undergraduate student pay here uh, to IIT Kanpur. Uh, but then you, when you come to higher education, it's only the government-funded you know, institutions. So that's, that's the major challenge that we have. How do you do that? Uh, certainly, this is uh, you know, the beyond one institute's uh, you know, uh, goal to do such transformative change, but one can always think of doing something that what you could do, right? So one of the initiatives that we have taken at IIT Kanpur, uh, there are, I'll talk about a couple of initiatives as part of the Ranjit Singh Roji Siksha Kendra is to engage with the UP government at two levels. One, to train their elementary school teachers, right? To how to teach, that's one, because you have to create interest in the kids, right? And also to you know, teach to as many schools as possible through remote means and things like that. So we have set up pilot projects like that. There are you know, schools where we have set up the video conference facility. Our faculty go to the Ranjit Singh, the center here. From there, they engage with and teach and so on. So that's something that we have started. But then this is not enough, obviously, but one has to do more than that. But that's a model if it works. The UP government want to expand it to the entire state. So we are now doing a pilot project in involving some three, four districts. But that's the model that we are putting to them. And uh, if it works, then there are many institutes, as you said. It's not just one institute that can be engaged to really do that. Coming to uh, the hostel, uh, yeah, it is a challenge. Uh, the challenge is the following. Now let's look at, uh, again, I'll compare it with, you know, often uh, IIT is compared with IIT of 10 years back or 15 years back, 30 years back, how it was, how it's now. But if you compare the universities, the leading universities anywhere, there is no university that houses all its students within their campus. They don't provide, you know, accommodation to everybody at an affordable rate, right? They don't give, right? Even at best they can give you is for the first year undergraduate for the undergraduate. So that's a huge expectation from a you know institute to grow, not only in terms of academic program research, but also to provide accommodation for every student, right? So this is not a sustainable model. The student have to live somewhere and come and study, right? That's what it is. So, but it doesn't happen. And second, whenever there is an increase in the number of you know seats, this is not something within your control. So the government would announce, rightly so, because these are all publicly funded universities, and students pay very little for their training here. And, and they have a purpose. They have, for example, 15% EWS reservation, 30% girl students open university seat. You know, you expand. Now, this is announced, so we have to admit student. So but the hostels take time to construct, and then hostel is something that given to us from our own earning to construct, right? So there is a challenge. It's not only in terms of constructing, the fee that you collect for maintenance also is very, very you know, modest. You know? So there is a challenge. As I told you that we are having 4,000 seat hostels coming up. When it comes, probably it will set, you know, settle down. But until then, that's a challenge, right? The challenge is whether you want to live somewhere outside in a condition, wherever it is, as compared to a condition where three students can share a room yet you have a better campus. This is the trade-off one has to think of, right? That's where it is unfortunate, but that's the way you have to live with for a few years to, before you get in. Coming back to your first question, uh, is about the faculty, right? Now, there are two ways of looking at faculty. What has grown? So 
your UG students are pretty much stabilized. You have about 5,000 students, not going to grow, that's it, right? But what has grown is the master's PhD student. And then with that growth, you're not going to have a large classes for them, right? And what in return they do is many of the tutorial that you spoke about, they're handled by the graduate students, the PhD students, right, and master's students. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the change that you have in the institute now. So even our faculty strength is about 600, where you have about you know, maybe 13 students to one faculty or whatever, and if you're talking about the teaching classes, you have a large number of graduate students, senior PhD students, who are trained in this area that they are doing. The third one that I'll talk about is, there is a program called a Sati, right? I don't know how many of you heard about it. This is a program uh, which is uh, an online uh, program uh, that is championed by IIT Kanpur for class 10, 11, 12 students. Anybody can register and they can do all the you know, lectures they can listen to. There are quiz, they can take up exams. It trains them for the JE or GATE or you know, many different kind of a, you know, training that we offer. It is a kind of a, you know, uh, opportunity for students who otherwise cannot get coaching because unfortunately coaching is a reality, right? So it is not what you know, but how fast you can solve a question. Unfortunately, that's what life is now. So these are some of the initiatives that we have taken, yeah. Yeah, please. So question regarding your medical sciences center. Its focus is on specialized and complex medicine, and LVAD is an example of it. Uh, uh, a good choice because of the large number of heart diseases. My fundamental question is that, and there's a certain amount of uptake that such a device can take. You know, there's so many doctors who can do uh, high highly intrusive surgery to deploy them. So is the nation ready to take up your uh, innovation in terms of deploying it at scale? Yeah. Second part of that question is that we justify the project based on the number of uh, cases that happen. Uh, an alternate approach would be to bring in technologies which educate people to healthier lifestyle or to do what you call uh, um, ment health maintenance uh, in, so that the large number of cases don't yeah. happen and the number sure. comes down. So sure. that's a two-part question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, on the current approach, how will you be able to sure. de deploy it with right. the, the number of medical facilities and trained doctors? And B, why not reduce the number of cases rather than handle them once yeah. the condition sure. appears? Yeah. Well taken, point is well taken. Uh, let me tell why we are talking about LVAT. So when you have a tech, no, I'll come to that. I'll certainly uh, uh, appreciate your question. See, it's a technology institute, and if you want to say that we are going to develop devices, right? So this is one of the challenging devices to be developed. There are many companies that fail. There's only one company in the world that manufactures. And certainly this is not like a lack we are, lack we are treating, but if you can make one such challenging device that we can make it and show to the world, your credibility goes up, right? That's the important thing. That's why people would, uh, that's the main reason because it is tech, you know, technically challenging you know, area. To address your second thing, you know, do you do feather masses? Yes, so we have uh, signed an MOU with the UP government for developing what is called as health stack. This is an AI-based platform a link to telemedicine and point of care devices. There are a large number of startups that we have for the entire state of Uttar Pradesh. So this will be deployed in all wellness centers of the state. So if you do this, this is going to be the largest in the world, any such activities taken because UP is bigger than many of the European countries or many of them put together as well in terms of population, right? That is being launched next week by the government of UP, right? This is in partnership. So we also have many low hanging fruits, as you said, you know, for example, tuberculosis, you know, is one of the major ailments, right? One of the easiest way to diagnose is x-ray, but at, at the village level, you don't have. So we are developing what is called as a handheld x-ray machine, right? But then there are challenges comes with the x-ray machine. So when you do that, it can be used for something else. For example, Will it be used for a prenatal diagnosis, right? So we are making, I mean, there are challenges in each, anything you talk about. So 
we are developing an x-ray machine with an AI algorithm such that it cannot be used for anything other than your lung, right? So there are many such projects that are there in the pipeline. So I just highlighted one to tell that we could take up some challenging you know, uh, issues and come to this stage. Yeah, please. Thank you for very uh, informative. It was great to see all the um, development that have taken place uh, very advanced. One thing I noticed that, you know, in terms of partnerships, uh, in terms of international partnerships, they were more uh, mainly academic partnerships. Um, I did not see any industrial partnerships. Did I miss it or is there a uh, some regulation, strategic, or areas of focus reason, you know, that could be... You know, we do have a large number of industry partners, but these are more on research, right? So we have, there are two ways by which we can engage with the industry, right? Uh, one is what is called as a consultancy research, where we help them, right? Uh, the, the second one is that joint research. So there are, see our, uh, just to give you an idea, so our R&D, our uh, fundraising or grants that we get in a year is close to about 200 to 250 crores currently, of which about 35% comes from industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I meant international industry. Yes, it includes like Boeing and I can go oh, on okay. listing, you know, Boeing and there are many Japanese companies, there are Israeli companies and there are European companies that, that they are funding projects, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Uh, of your sort of R&D model that you're presenting, right? I mean, you have these very nice initiatives, School of Sustainability and others, for which I think, you know, you have to raise funds, as, as you're saying. Once you establish these, though, you know, you have these sort of continuing expenditures for getting new equipment, maintaining what you have, et cetera. Generally speaking, those types of expenses are also very large. Are you able to, in writing grants to the government and industries here, able to sort of add indirect charges for maintaining the equipment, upgrading your infrastructure, et cetera, because otherwise it gets very hard to keep sort of, you know, uh, doing the type of work that you want to do. Yes, uh, that's a challenge. Uh, so uh, the, the fund that we get is mainly for the building, because that's where no funding agency will give, right? So we will be able to get fund raised for infrastructure in terms of equipment facilities that we'd have. Many of the center of excellence I spoke about, the fund have come from many other government agencies. But what we, you know, what the government agencies or industry don't give is the building. So whether I'm talking about Kotak School or it's mainly for the building, right? To your question, yes, that's a challenge. Like it's not like United States where 50% you are institutional overhead, right? So the government of India, if you look at really the funding body, uh, they give maximum 20%. Some of the agencies are like 20% of the grant or five lakhs, whichever is lawyer. So you really, I mean, we have been pleading, we have been fighting with them to give more, uh, but it's not. And, and with the industry right now, you know, is 20%. Now, only IIT Kanpur cannot increase that. It has to be a consensus. We have been talking, but still, it is a challenge in India to increase the overhead. And uh, what you said is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, you know, the challenging thing is how do you maintain equipment? So, you basically charge, even if I have established facility, I charge myself from another grant to pay for it, right? That's sort of, you know, helps you to run the facility. That's, that's, that's what the scenario is, yeah. It's a challenge. Thank you. So it looks like you're talking about the Indian government. It looks like uh, building the hostel is a high priority for students. But why not give that land to builders and let them build and own the building? Let them run the building. Well, uh, technically, if you do that, then you should agree to whatever rent that they would charge to the students. I mean, the, this is this is the case on every campus in the United States. That's at least easy there. It's right, difficult here. Right. What we are charging for six months is about eighteen hundred. No builder can sustain that kind. I mean, it's not even maintenance. And you ch you, today I increase 500 rupees or make it like 
you know, increase another thousand rupees, there will be a protest here. No, what I mean is, yeah. uh, let's say you have space for 8,000 people instead mm -hmm. of 10. Mm -hmm. So you say, look, first 8,000 get campus facility, the rest have to go and go to the open market, which is the builders. They rented their rental properties and you are not charging that rent, you sure. don't receive that rent. Yeah, but that's that's the model now the current uh, government is also proposing to the to the institute to go for this, what is called a PPP model, what they call as viability gap funding. So they may give you 50% of the loan, 50% you get it from the builder, therefore this is sort of subsidized. Then you give them more avenues for running other facilities, therefore they can you know, get more earnings from that. But this is still not something that uh, uh, found uh, uh, many takers. Yeah, this is okay. in discussion. Yeah, I've been discussing with many of the builders here, but it's not taken up yet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh. Yeah. Uh, my question or my suggestion regarding the medical or engineering. Uh, initiative of going, uh, we should go for medical college other, but our coordination should be to for R&D work for detection of the disease, so that we can stop increasing the disease. Like the cancer is increasing like anything. The other diseases are increasing, so that we can stop the disease. So our R&D work initially should go for developing the R&D work for the equipment or this thing. Equipment in the, that. Because IITK is a teaching institute R&D work. So our focus should be first to develop the equipment for detection of the disease. I thought that's what I said. When I talk about a handheld x-ray device or, these are all, you know, the, I gave you just two examples. There are many such devices, right? Yeah, so yeah, what you're saying is right. I mean, there are uh, preventive, there are diagnosis, there are something on the treatment. So all are looked at, but in equal, equal proportion, right? Yeah. Okay. I come from the steel sector, so I have some issues with sure. regard to steel. Yes, yeah. yeah. See, as you know, the steel sector in India is growing. Yeah. And probably it is the only country where the growth is too much. And uh, in years to come, from 150 or 160, we can go for 500 million ton. That is the vision of the government. Now, my issue is, on the other hand, if you see, the metallurgical study yes. in India come down. is just coming down, I should say, metallurgists are becoming extinct community. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in the institute, the name of metallurgy has vanished, which yeah. is a very <laughs> shocking thing for me. Yeah. And not only for me, from the industry also. Sure. If you go to any steel industry, because I have been dealing with all the steel plants in the country and companies, they only say there is no metallurgist. Yeah. What they do? They take the chemical, okay. mechanical, and other engineers and send them for rigorous training in their institute. Right. And ultimately, those people are taking care of the uh, metallurgical needs of the, I mean, the company. I th it is a big issue, I mean, issue that with the problems of greening the steel sector, we become more and more research, research, research and development. So I think uh, we should think something on this line so that the metallurgical fraternity increases and the faculties for R&D particularly, not only for uh, pursuing the uh, I mean, production areas, but R&D should improve. Thank yes, you. Sure. I, I fully agree with you, but uh, the reason why the, I'm sure you know that why the name has been changed and all is because of the market force, right? There are very few takers for the undergraduate program in, in material science, material science and engineering, what you have now. Like in, if you really look at it, it is a rank the lowest. Even economics, chemistry, physics, bio, everything is, you know, the cutoff is much higher. So there are, and the reason is that, that when they graduate, they don't get good offers, right? At the end of the day, students, especially for the undergraduate program, come for good placement, right? It doesn't work there, right? They're not competitive, they're not many takers. That's, that has been the legacy of that, you know? I fully agree, otherwise that is something that one has to invest. Uh, we are very much aware of it. In fact, now we are recruiting more people in this area because not necessarily we are looking at undergraduate program, but at least research, masters, and PhD. Can we really, you know, train more people? Because there are industry because we are not training a huge number there, so that would still take care of it. This is something that has been discussed, and Thank we are you. trying to attend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Can I please? Yeah. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Madhu Gupta. Uh, my topic is very different from what everybody's been talking about. Right. I'm going to talk about the suicides that are happening. This is a field in which I've been working since 1992. And I used to come to IIT Kanpur regularly. I remember once I came here and there was a very urgent message for me at VH that the de dean wants to see you. So I literally ran there and he said, you're not going to use the word suicide in your presentation. So um, we had a big discussion and um, maybe I was a little arrogant. I told him, you are damn good in your field, no doubt about it but you're not as good as in this field as I am. Anyway, so then I happened to go to US. You must be knowing Anjali Joshi. Yeah. yeah. So their contribution, the batch contribution yeah. was pending. So I had a chat with Anjali and she said, we will give this money. And she sat there and called her batchmates and collected about 25 lakhs that came to IIT Kanpur. I don't know what happened to that money. The idea was to uh, use it for training, yeah. etc. cetera. Yeah. So now I have, I have no idea because I've not been coming for last couple of years. Also, it's not possible for few people to take care of such a big problem. Also, it happens everywhere. So, uh, now, what, what's happening nowadays, every other day you see a news item. And uh, I'm sure Kanpur also is doing a lot. I believe a new group has started by Ram. I'm part of that group. I don't know what exactly is the agenda. But, see, it's a problem where large number of people have to participate. Yeah and have to be trained. For example, a professor who's teaching computer science may be damn good in that, but may not know anything about empathy. So even they have to be trained. Um, so I don't know what IIT is thinking about. It. Yeah, what you said is uh, a problem. It's a new generation problem as well, because uh, you know the biggest challenge, like I can tell you, uh, what it was 10 years, 20 years back and now, the students who come in to the, either the masters or undergraduate, they come in after a lot of time spent in their preparation for the JE and GATE and so on. So basically they have really not spent time in any of their sports or hobby or whatever it is. They are so you know, focused on something. Uh, that could be one reason as to why they cannot really mingle and get and so on. So there's a demographic change. Therefore, there is a change in the approach as well. There's no denial about it. And I don't think any faculty here would say that I am an expert in this field. Nobody will say that. It's a different ball game, right? So uh, there's also a fact that you know the, the challenges that we face in IITs is very different from the challenge that any of the universities in the US will face because they engage with the students only for that academic you know, contact hours. They don't stay there. Here, the students stay 24 hours on campus. So it's pretty much the warden and the entire system to take care just about, not I'm talking about mental well-being, even otherwise there is an emergency. The support system is required is enormous because you know that's, that's where it is. So uh, we are looking at many aspects. Uh, the idea is to do the best that you can do in terms of exactly what you said. It is not just only the awareness program or training for the students, but it should be there for the staff and faculty to, as you said, empathy. You know, This has to be there. And these are the things that we are discussing and trying to sort of do. And with regard to the batch fund, I think uh, you know, Kapil would share with you the details as to what we have done with that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, if there are no questions, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.
Thank you, sir. I would now request Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean Resources and Alumni, to kindly address the gathering. Yes, very good afternoon to everyone. We heartily welcome you back at your own home on your 45th reunion, class of 1979. Again, first of all, we express a very sincere gratitude to all of you for supporting many, many initiatives at IIT Kanpur, whether it is for student, faculty, like Pushpagak Fellowship or Kedar Singh Rawat Scholarship or many others, MAPI Undergraduate Fellowship, Scholarships, Faculty Fellowships, Class of 19, 1979 Infrastructure Fund, Class Fund, Waterfront as well, which looks very beautiful. I hope you got a chance to visit. It looks very colorful. And I think there are more than 4, 4.5 crores uh, such uh, initiatives have been supported by the Class of 1979. Really, thanks a lot from our end. Really, sincerely appreciate it. IIT Kanpur recently celebrated 64 years of uh, its foundation. So also we could uh, recognize multiple institute fellows, uh, distinguished alumnus awardees, distinguished service awardees, young alumnus awardees, Satyendra Ke Dobe Memorial awardees. Also it is preceded by a cultural fest called Antarang. So it has become now a norm that we do uh, celebrate that event uh, very, very uh, elaborately. There are multiple in alumni engagement activities which actually have started. So we also have started connecting the recipient and the donor in multiple ways. We have had multi of flurry of reunions last year, around 15 of them. And this year we have nine. So this is the eighth one. Uh, one more to go, uh, the class of 1974, just following this. Uh, there are multiple such initiatives. So again, we can see there are you know, PBCC 65 Fund or Khadim Dewan Building, Outreach Building, Park 67, and recently the Waterfront 795 and also the class of 1970, Gym Expansion Fund. So these actually have been supported all by uh, uh, alumni or multiple batches. Uh, just to let you know the engagement of alumni, so we also have something called IIT Convert. So this allows the direct engagement of donor and the beneficiary. Earlier, the money used to come, and it used to go to a pool, and then I think it was dispersed. But now we have started engaging them. And really, the kind of message when I see the student giving it back or interacting with the donor, I really get tears in my eyes many times. So it feels like, oh, I thought the current generation is very aloof, and they don't respect that. But I think they also are very much engaged. And they also now exhibit, exhibit and uh, say that, express that they would like to give it back to the institute. So that is still very, very rewarding in, in that sense. We also started interacting with the current batches because they will become alumni of future. So that way also we are now sensitizing them and now also engaging them more actively in our activities as well. The multiple alumni mentorship programs. So we also request you to connect. So we have started slowly to let a alum become a mentor of a student, maybe one or two or three depending on how we take it forward. But currently, we have around 75 alumni who are engaged. And slowly, we are building it up so that we make it stronger. And then we bring, reach other batches as well. So class of 1977 has initiated this. Also, there are multiple events like Alma Connect in which we take uh, lessons from our alumni. We call them, or it's online. And then they engage with uh, students in multiple, uh, multiple ways to talk about how to live life, what to look forward, how to take classes, how to live at IIT Kanpur and what prospects they have in future. So that way it is very, very helpful. There are multiple challenges uh, in terms of funding as well as uh, there are other challenges which I'll highlight. But main thing is now we have st stopped getting some, uh, low, uh, we, we don't get uh, money to support our infrastructure. So we are completely dependent on internal resources to generate that. And that's where we again require your generous support and also letting us connect. Uh, with whatever funding agency you, you can actually lead us to, CSR funding or research projects. Even your involvement as an experienced person who can give time as well. So that is also very, very important for us. And there are multiple funding opportunities for infrastructure, for community welfare, research innovation, student faculty. I'm sure Mr. Kapilkal would have shared much of it yesterday. I just am uh, giving an overview. So that way we don't leave anything unturned. And also, there is something called the project management, management system. So each and every rupee what you donate actually makes a difference, and we keep account of it. So whatever is there, I mean, whatever money is donated, we have proper progress reports. We have its utilization certificate. So there were some ironing also were done. So now everything is available at a fingertip. So whatever reports are required, needed, I think they're all available. We'll be happy to share it if something is amiss. Let us know. We'll be happy to do that. But the information does go very routinely to all the 
donors. About infrastructure, this is already touched, but we have multiple such infrastructure initiatives by multiple batches. And also the 795 looks very beautiful. I, I hope you can see this particular image out here in front of the library, which is looking very colorful as well. About Gangwal School, there are multiple avenues again available. So it is a very uh, aspirational project, dream project taken, uh, taken by IT Kanpur. Multiple centers of excellences, clinical departments, and also there is a, enough expertise available on campus to take it forward and make it a reality. And in terms of funding opportunities, there are multiple super specialty hospital beds, academic research wings, housing blocks, uh, research center, cancer care research beds, and such uh, avenues are also are available in case you are interested or you can lead us someone uh, to us someone who actually is willing to support. Uh, will be really very very grateful. Uh, yes, this is a very pain problem. Student housing, uh, rightly pointed, we have currently 70, 9,500 around students and we have capacity of around 7,500. And Hall 14 has a now capacity of 750, which will be soon ready in a month's time. And now we also have Hall 15 coming up with a capacity of 2,000. So that will actually relieve the problem to a certain extent. But yes, we are, uh, I think there, is, there will be definitely a growth in terms of students in the future years. So we we'll also will be we are also planning for that to increase the capacity further. Again, there are multiple new initiatives. Like there are now new departments which have come up, and their needs are also very aspirational. And again, if you are interested in supporting a cause or a particular department, you are more than welcome to connect with us. Uh, so there are multiple avenues available in cognitive sciences, design, and space department, and many other places. In terms of student initiatives, there are again avenues for scholarships, financial aids, merit awards, travel grants, student development program, recreational am amenities, and multiple uh, others. Uh, one very important thing I would like to highlight here is we have also started Sayok Financial Aid Program, in which many a times students come, but they don't have enough money to even pay the deposit or even take care of their uh, expenses once they actually arrive. So for that also, we have started something called a Sayok Financial Aid Program. Also, we would like the students to attend more uh, present their work, attend more international conferences as well. So that also, I think, is a area where we can actually do a little bit uh, more. About faculty, again, there are multiple avenues of young faculty fellowships, new faculty fellowships, faculty chairs, uh, because this uh, attracting a good faculty also is, I think, a challenge in terms of uh, letting people come, uh, Kanpur being a little bit a remote uh, region. But nonetheless, so this also, I think, is an open avenue available for to take it forward. Uh, also, you being you being at a vantage of your experience spending so much time in the real world, uh, if you have any connections with, with any firm industry for their corporate social responsibility, uh, out, getting some uh, funding out there, that also may be very, very helpful. And again, all these donations which even industries or you will provide will be uh, tax exempt. So we also give, you know, we also are uh, exempt, income tax exempt for that. So please get, connect to us. Also, one avenue is uh, planned giving. So, in case you are in case you are wanting to give either cash, stock, retirement assets, and you want to put that in your will, we'll be happy to connect and then uh, take it forward in some sense. So, we have Mr. Rajat and Mr. Kapil who can also lead you further in that particular direction. And again, it is uh, under tax exempt category, so it will also be very helpful either in India or in US. So, this is again the same, the showing the tax benefit, but I will not get into that. Uh, we also do not shy away from thanking our donors. So we have Kritagya magazine, which highlights the contribution by multiple donors. And we value it a lot. We also express our sincere gratitude. It's not only about money. It's also about sometimes the time or the direction or the guidance or the tutelage or the patronage that you have for IIT Kanpur. We really are very thankful. And words really are not enough to express that. Uh, so we really we are very, very thankful for your time and your dedication to IIT Kanpur. This is the team which makes it happen. So I would uh, request if you can please give a round of applause to the team. These are the people who work behind the scene and make your stay very, very pleasant. Uh, so we are, about, we are around, I think, 30, 35 people in the group which make it happen. Uh, at the end, I would also thank all the coordinators, Rajiv ji, Shahid ji, Madhu ji, Mahavir ji, Lokesh ji, Vasan ji, for uh, arranging and organizing all this. I typically I typically leave with a few words. So, आप लोगों के लिए चार लाइनें हैं. जिक्र हो पुरानी बात का याद वो खास हो लेती है. जिक्र हो पुरानी बात का याद वो खास हो लेती है. पर मूरख ये भावुक भावना गले का साथ कहाँ देती है? 
झिझक ये भी झिझक ये भी कि शब्दों में कैसे पिरो ये दोस्ती बूंदों में कैसे सिमटे समंदर ये गहराई कहाँ बयां होती है ये गहराई कहाँ बयां होती है थैंक यू थैंक यू सर लेडीज एंड जेलमैन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सेगमेंट ऑफ द सेरेमनी विच इंक्लूड्स द फेलिसिटेशन ऑफ द डिस्टिंग्विश्ड एलमनाय The Distinguished Alumnus Award is the highest award given by IIT Kanpur to its alumni in recognition of their outstanding achievements. It's a pleasure to felicitate past DA awardees of the class of 1979 for their outstanding contributions. I would request Mr uh, I would request Pro Professor S Ganesh and Professor Kantesh Palani to kindly come up on stage and felicitate the awardees. requesting mr lalit jalan da recipient of the year 2002 to kindly come up on stage backstage can you please switch off the projector <laughs> requesting professor yogendra requesting professor yogendra kumar joshi dear recipient of the year 2011 Now I would request Mr. Ved Arya, dear recipient of the year 2020, to kindly come up on stage. He's not here. Okay. I would now request Professor Rajendra Bodia, DSA recipient of the year 2020, to kindly come up on stage. I would like to congratulate the recipients of the award award and take this opportunity to express my gratitude on behalf of the institute for their continued support and patronage. <clears throat> Now we would like to felicitate Mr. Rajiv Roy whose generosity and selfless support for a fellow batchmate have left a lasting impact on everyone. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I would like to call upon Ms. Professor Kantesh Palani to kindly say a few words about the selfless efforts and contribution made by Mr. Rajiv Roy. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, Mr. Nanda Kishore actually voluntarily agreed to speak on his or for Mr. Rajiv Roy. So, yeah, so uh, as most of you know, our batchmate K. Sriram, Case as we called him, had health issues. Some years ago, he had depleted all his financial resources and was at a stage where he needed help. He called a few friends for financial help. It was obvious that just some financial contribution was not the answer. What was needed was someone to review his health and financial situation, then come up with a plan of action, and more importantly, convince Sri Ram to move forward with that plan of action. Rajiv went to meet Sri Ram and reviewed the situation. He concluded that Sri Ram needed institutional help and that he needed to be unburdened from his financial situation. So here is what Rajiv accomplished. Got Sriram enrolled in the benefits of Social Security and Medicare, where they would pay for Sriram's expenses at a facility. Got Sriram admitted in a uh, hospital facility where he would be cared for. Got him admitted into medical study being conducted by UC San Diego for his specific condition. He wrapped up and vacated his rental place, and he remained the primary point of contact if anything happened to his care. And all this, he was able to convince him. Otherwise, you remember case was fairly strong-willed, all that. And he said, no, 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 any karenga wo karenga, whatever. Last year, November 2023, Sriram passed away. Raji sprang into action and organized the funeral and personally conducted the last rites. When the pundit, pundit when informed that Raji was not related to Sriram, said that in all his years of doing this, he has never seen a friend step up to perform the ceremonies. So we have nine people who signed this letter. And the only reason it's only nine is I couldn't figure out how to create a WhatsApp group with everybody but Rajiv. I didn't want him to get wind of it. So I just created a group of some people. We all signed and sent this letter. And so one last thing I want to mention that was not in this letter is what comes to mind is what my mom's highest praise for an individual was. It's a Telugu phrase calling kalmasham ledu, okay? And it loosely translates to person of pure heart, no hidden agenda, no, nothing to be manipulated. What he says, what he means, he does. And so I'm proud to call Rajiv my friend. <laughs> Requesting Professor A.K. Saha to kindly join us on the stage is the uh, Secretary Alumni Association. Thank you, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we have come to an end of the ceremony, I request Mr. Kapil Kaul, CEO ITK Development Foundation, to kindly come and deliver a word of thanks. Friends, as we move into the final uh, phase of this uh, um, today's uh, ceremony here, I would like to say we lost some of our batchmates. And let's just honor them as of batchmates who are not here and maintain like two minutes silence for them. And I'll just read out the names who we have lost. Uh, nothing in particular order. Deepak Narayan, Sumit Datta, Raghavendu Shukla, K. Shri Ram, Pradeep Sharma, Sunil Kulkarni, Avinash Chandra, Anupam Singh, Navjot Singh, Mahesh Chandra, Violin Murthy, Sunil Jain, Ram Chandra Nirmal.
थैंक यू कपिल सर प्लीज गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई होप यूर ऑल हैविंग अ गुड टाइम ऑन कैंपस सो आई एम रियली ऑनर्ड एंड प्रिवलेज टू बी प्रपोजिंग द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर दिस स्पेशल सेरेमनी आई बिगिन बाई थैंकिंग आर डायरेक्टर प्रोफेसर गणेश फॉर शेयरिंग अ डिटेल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द हाउ द इंस्टीट्यूट इज ग्रोइंग थैंक यू प्रोफेसर बलानी फॉर टेकिंग टाइम एंड गिविंग अस अ डिटेल ओवर व्यू ऑफ ऑल द Uh, endeavors on alumni engagement and fundraising uh, uh professor saha for joining us today for the felicitation uh, for uh, mr rajiv roy uh, most importantly the batch coordinators uh, mr shahid sheik uh, um, uh, rajiv ji and mr wasan joshi for coordinating with our team and bringing everyone together it really means a lot uh Uh, last but not uh, not last but most importantly all of you who are who've come all the way from different parts of the world to be here back on campus with your families uh, it it means a lot to us we want to see you here on campus more often and uh, i think the next one would be your uh, golden jubilee 50th in 5 years from now and we're hoping that we'll see even bigger numbers in the next one and uh, last but not the least the team uh, at both iitk df and dora and the visitors hostel the outreach auditorium who have been working tirelessly to make these reunions a reality and coordinating with you coordinating all arrangements here uh, so a big thank you to to the team that enables all of this and uh, thank you very much and now we'll all gather for a batch photograph outside and then we'll proceed for lunch thank you thank you so much <laughs>